Hello and good evening. I'm Melissa Idris. And I'm Sharad Kutin. You're watching Consider This, the show where we want you to consider and then reconsider what you know of the news of the day. Now, even with Parliament shuttered, members of Parliament and other elected representatives still play a vital role in ensuring the success of the National COVID-19 Immunization Programme, which is widely believed to be the way out of the twin public health and economic crisis we face. Now, as we eventually make our way through each state and territory in Malaysia, tonight's show will focus on the state of Pahang. We're going to be speaking to three Pahang MPs to better understand the situation on the ground. Um, each MP's role in the implementation of the PIC program, as well as the challenges that they face carrying out their representational functions under current restrictions. Let's begin the show today with Ramli Momatno. He's the AMNO Member of Parliament for Cameron Highlands. Um, hello, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Now, if I may begin with a closer look at the composition of your constituency. Uh, Cameron Highlands is home to uh, a number of Orang Asli communities. And the last time we, we checked, the nationwide um, number, the nationwide tally for uh, Orang Asli um, uh, re eligible recipients under the PIC program uh, totaled some 127,000. I'm just wondering, Ramli, um, in terms of your constituency, how many have been vaccinated and what has been done to help get them vaccinated? All right, now, Melissa, if you are, we are going to talk about uh, my constituency, uh, the pressing need right at this moment is the society here that wants to get back to their normal life, right? That is very, very pertinent from what I perceive around here. And then uh, in the matters of uh, the economic activities uh, to sustain their life. And uh, the lastly, the need to get them vaccinated immediately because if you look at my constituency, a number of them, basically, especially those around us, they're way, way off the national grid. So we need to approach them, convince them. But the outer constituency, I mean to say the local, uh, other than the around us, we have not much uh, perspective or problem of uh, registration, registering them uh, and uh, getting them to vaccinate Ravi, could you help us understand the, the uh, particular problems of, as you say, people, citizens who are off the grid uh, in Cameron Highlands? Is it terrain? Is it uh, the digital divide? What is it that prevents Orang Asli communities from uh, kind of accessing uh, the, the information that they need and also registering? All right, uh, Sharon, if you look at uh, my constituency, uh, about uh, more or less about 23 to 25% are the Orang Asli voters. Right? They basically live in the interior. In terms of communication wise, uh, the road access is not that good. And beside that, uh, communication in terms of internet, telephone line is uh, quite a lot to be done. So when information reach them, they might be distorted, they might misunderstand, so these are the matters that curtail the activities of, in terms of uh, information uh, they receive. Can I ask you then, Ramli, what's being done to help overcome those challenges? Is there anything that you're doing to help um, those communities in particular overcome these challenges? All right. In terms of uh, physical uh, access, in terms of roads, uh, uh, there are few there are few uh, projects that have been approved. For example, uh, the Batau uh, Simoy Lama SS, the government have already approved over 21 million for the project. And the interior from uh, Simoy Lama to Lenjang, more or less I was speaking with the, uh, with the, the district uh, engineer, the government have already approved about 30 over million. And we hope by the end of uh, 2022, all this network would be there. Meanwhile, if you talk about uh, telecommunication, uh, last few months I was with the minister and uh, from what I was made to understand, the project is ongoing and uh, in fact certain quarters of the area I see, I saw an improvement of uh, telecommunication in terms of internet access and phone. 
we hope that by the end of uh, 2023, this network will exist and work properly. Yeah, so that's very interesting. Maybe one other component that needs to be uh, added to the discussion of who's in Cameron Highlands and what the, you know their specific needs are are foreign workers. I understand that, uh, especially in the agricultural sector, there are many foreign workers. How has that issue been addressed? Because it seems to be uh, a kind of nationwide problem to vaccinate them or to alienate them. It seems to be twin pools within the government at the moment. All right, uh, Sharat, in this perspective, um, this is my point of view. Huh? Uh, it is first we get our citizens first to be fully registered and vaccinated. And in terms of Cameron Highland, from what I got the feedback, uh, we are also registering them and uh, presume in uh, one or two months, uh, the, 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 pra the, pra the practical aspect of it can be done. This includes the foreign workers that already in existed in, uh, in our constituency. <coughs> uh, so can I ask, just follow up on that then, you know, I mean, a part of the, the economy of Cameron Highlands, agriculture and farming is a huge part of that. Can we talk about um, the livelihoods of those affected by the pandemic and the subsequent lockdown and uh, the economic crisis, um, and also the, the foreign labour who work within the, um, these, this industry. Um, how, what do you understand about the situation on the ground of their welfare? All right, uh, Melissa, if you look at the uh, Cameron Highland economy, you know, it's basically a tourism, a tourism base. Uh, so the impact is great <coughs> in the sense that there are no, no more uh, hearts of uh, tourists coming in, so there is no more business. Uh, so the perspective of economics uh, uh, of um, uh, earning by the locals, these have great impacts on Cameron Highland. Meanwhile, uh, product and exports, uh, you, you understand that the Cameron Highland, uh, basically a majority of the, of the products are exported. So it curtails. Uh, in terms of uh, production, in terms of uh, movement, which is very important. It affects the change, the change uh, for these products to be exported. If locally, yes, our economy's impact is very bad. Rami, <coughs> can you help us understand uh, how much help the government has given to the agricultural sector uh, or any kind of initiatives to help uh, you know, ease the flow of the supply of vegetables, either locally or across the border to Singapore, for instance. All right, now, uh, sure. Uh, I was with the um, Triple South Baham uh, a few days back. In fact, I'm constantly in touch with him. If you look, uh, if you talk about AIDS, health, the state government has initiated about, I mean, uh, from their state coffer, about 7.8 million to help, especially those frontliners daily small business owner, taxi drivers, those being quarantined, vagabonds, uh, poor citizen, handicapped, elder citizen, single parents. Uh, this is a one-off uh, assistant. Um, and uh, beside that, uh, we are constantly monitoring to our local uh, district office, the PKOB, Banchana, Jatankwasa. Uh, whichever that can be assisted in terms of movement and such, uh, we we usually will keep in touch with uh, Miti, keep in touch with our Menteri Pertahanan, uh, our Senior Security of Minister uh, Yang Borhamat uh, Ismail Sabri, and we try to ease uh, these activities to somehow rather let the economic do, do not go to zero. There is still movement. And we are really hoping that uh, this COVID uh, matter be due over in a very so uh, soon, the, the soonest. All right. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you sharing your insights with us tonight. Appreciate your time.
Hi, welcome back to Consider This. I'm Melissa Idris. With me is Sharad Kutten. Now, if you've just joined us on the show, tonight we're speaking to three Pahang MPs or members of parliament to find out exactly the economic needs of their constituents during this crisis, but also the challenges that they face in getting the people of Pahang vaccinated. We speak now to Fuzia Saleh, PKR MP for Kuantan. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today, Fuzia. And I'm just wondering, um, since the rollout of the uh, national COVID-19 immunization program, are you satisfied with the vaccination uh, rate of your constituents? Um, uh, what are we seeing? What do we know so far about um, how quickly uh, the people of Kuantan are getting vaccinated? Um, hi, good evening. Uh, thank you, Melissa. Um, thank you for inviting me to this uh, show. Um, I would just like to share that uh, Kuantan is a semi-urban, semi-rural. Uh, my constituency is semi-urban. Uh, uh, we are part of, of the uh, newly uh, new city of Kuantan, but uh, many part of my constituency is also uh, border bordering to Pekan. So uh, the background of the uh, my constituents are varied. Uh, there are some. There are many of them who work as a uh, fisherman uh, or work um, in uh, agriculture and so on. Those in the town centre um, mostly uh, work in a small um, in businesses, small businesses in banks and so on. So I, I think when I describe that, you can imagine how uh, we are affected by this uh, pandemic and by the lockdown directly. Because <clears throat> you see, uh, especially about the uh, PDPR. Uh, we have difficulty with internet uh, connectivity. Uh, parents have difficulty with um, having gadgets um, for, their, for, their, for their children, homeschooling. In fact, my house, uh, we, do, we don't even have a landline. I don't have Unify in my house. I'm using Wi-Fi and sometimes I have difficulty with my Wi-Fi too. So that's on one front, but on the economic front, uh, we are also uh, badly hit because um, especially those who are uh, daily wage earners uh, who work in the Pasar Malam uh, and, uh, and who, who manage uh, small micro industries, uh, these are the ones badly hit. And uh, on a daily basis, we do get a lot of requests and um, for assistance uh, for uh, to put food on the table um, and so on. So, so, so Fuzia, can we just uh, so turn to the vaccination uh, issue uh, that Melissa raised? Uh, it, it, you paint a really interesting picture of your constituents. Who is in the loop and who's kind of off the grid in terms of awareness and access for vaccinations? Uh, if you look at the data, Sharad, if you look at the data, you can see that Pahang uh, has one of the is one of the lowest in terms of those who have registered to vaccinate. Um, in terms of those of non uh, turnout, uh, Pahang is one of the highest, and also Pahang is uh, among the lowest after Kelantan and Terengganu in terms of numbers of those who have received vaccination. Right. As to exactly as to exactly who. I have a bit of a difficulty with that because um, I think PKOB have a difficulty uh, communicating directly with me, and they have not invited me to any of their uh, of their meetings. I like now it is very important for us to be working uh, closely together. However, um, I can only get my information in the public domain, um, like the others. I have difficulty having access to information. So I have, I am also in the dark, groping in the dark, finding out uh, who is the most uh, disadvantaged group within my Sorry. country. Uh, Fusia, when you refer to PKOB, that is the Pusat Kawalan Operasi Bencana. Is that is that right? So that means, so every constituent has a every constituency has a one stop center to coordinate kind of um, uh, emergency uh, supplies and the vaccination. Is that is that correct? Okay, and they, you haven't had a lot of communication with them? Is, is that only been a one-way communication as in they tell you, they brief you, or they're not listening? They, they don't tell me, they don't brief me, they didn't call me for meetings, they don't respond to me. Uh, in fact, there was once when they uh, wrongly invited me and then when I was so excited because they have not invited me for the past one year, 
and suddenly I received an invitation. I was very, very excited. But uh, upon um, uh, logging in to the meeting, I was declined three times. <laughs> I was stopped from entering the meeting room. So <laughs> apparently, apparently they made a mistake of inviting me. Fuzia, we see this over and over again, this uh, lack of willingness to share with those who are seen as political rivals. Because we just spoke to uh, Rami Matno from Cameron Highlands, and he says he's on a in daily contact with the Mantri Basar's office. So how, how can bridges be built in order that you can serve your constituents better? Because clearly, if you're left out of the loop, it doesn't serve anybody's uh, benefit. Yeah, I agree with you, uh, Sharad, but uh, it worked both ways. Um, I reach out and they have to respond. But uh, if, if I reach out and there's no response whatsoever, then there's difficulty, for example, I have to go to the individual agencies and see if they can respond to me. For example, I go to uh, Jabatan Kebajikan and ask them what are the uh, assistance that they have. So they say they have some food basket and I, I have to ask them what is the criterion for asking for, for, for the constituents to um, apply for this food basket. And one by one, it goes like that. There are some agencies that are helpful, there are some agencies that are not. So, uh, or, or they fear that... Uh, of something, I don't know what it is, but uh, that's the situation and it's, it's not easy. Um, it's like groping in the dark. Uh, I want to do as much as I can for my constituents, but uh, that's the challenges in front of me. Well, thank you so much for joining us and sharing those uh, those those issues that you're facing. Uh, we hope that you get some of them resolved. But thank you for letting us know the the challenges that you're facing. We're going to take a quick break here, but you uh, we've just been speaking to Fuzia Saleh, MP of Kuantan. There, after this, another MP in Pahang, the MP of Bentong. So stay tuned to consider this. <laughs> Hi, thank you so much for staying with Sharad and I on Consider This. Let's continue our conversation with members of parliament from Pahang on the show today. Let's speak now to Wong Tak. He's the MDP member uh, of, for parliament for uh, the constituency of Bentong. Thank you so much for joining us on the show tonight. Um, we want to ask you about the vaccination rollout that's going on in your constituency. Um, has it been a smooth process so far? Are you satisfied with the rate of vaccination uh, within the constituency of Bentong? It is a bit worrisome. Uh, Bentong have a population of uh, 120,000. Uh, that means we have to, uh, in order to uh, achieve uh, uh, 80%, uh, we need to uh, resonate 96,000 people uh, to date. Uh, I understand, I was informed, only 12,000 uh, have been resonated. And at the moment, uh, the capacity, we have two PPV uh, in, in Bantum, and uh, uh, every day we have a, uh, we have to uh, resonate about uh, uh, 800, we have the capacity of 800 uh, people to be resonated. But unfortunately, I was informed, uh, vaccine coming into Bangtung, delivered into Bangtung, uh, was, uh, the figure was never certain uh, at time 600, at time 300, uh, there's full of uncertainty. Uh, how to carry out a uh, uh, program, uh, an effective program uh, with supply that is uh, uh, so uncertain. Uh, so if with the rate going on now, uh, I think we have to, uh, to reach the target of 80%, uh, 96,000 people, uh, probably will be uh, sometime next year. Wong Tang, I want to ask you about the, the number you gave us, about the numbers of people who live in Bantu, it's 120,000. Does this number include people who are non-citizens? Uh, and I'm, 
I'm wondering because in December when you had an enhanced MCO uh, and it involved um, many non-locals, at least what the news was reporting, uh, 45 companies, 120 premises, 1,200 residents, and the report say majority of whom were non-local. Um, uh, yes, there are. We this hundred twenty thousand is only the the uh, resident uh, Malaysian uh, resident in Bantung. How many how many non locals do you uh, do you estimate they are in in the constituency? Because it, this is important for the control of the disease. I mean, the disease does not discriminate between citizens and non citizens. Exactly. Uh, in Pentung, uh, we have a small industry uh, area. Uh, I, I believe the number uh, not uh, not so big like other urban area. Okay. For foreign, for foreign worker. And and just speaking about the the rollout of the vaccination uh, program, I, I'm just wondering, okay, what can be done to uh, to facilitate a better, more efficient uh, vaccination rate in Bantung? Are we talking about more PPVs? Are we talking about more dialogue between uh, yourself versus uh, federal government, which is coordinating this? How would you, what would you like to see improved in the entire vaccination process? You see, uh, Bantung, Bantung is a big area, the constituency of Bantung. Uh, from Kenting, uh, uh, go all the way to the border of Negeri Sembilan. Uh, in, uh, beside the uh, township of Bento, we have uh, eight Feldas team, we have uh, 15 Chinese New Village, and we have 15 Orang Asli Settlement, and we have six ST, and then many uh, rural Kampung areas. So it's a big area to cover. Mm. To me, uh, two, at this moment, we have two PPV, which is ridiculous. And we are talking about uh, people coming out uh, from Prangai to Momoy. We are talking about two hours. We are talking about 50 to 60 kilometer travel distance. So for people to come uh, in a rural area, uh, uh, striking with uh, poverty, uh, at this moment, and how how to travel the current distance, how do they plan uh, for for to to come out to the township? I think the people, uh, the government must come up with a very effective uh, mechanism. Uh, get to the people. Uh, the deliver system must go in rather than have them to come out. Uh, I want to see more uh, uh, activate all the uh, uh, clinic local clinic. Uh, in their area, and then uh, have the mobile unit when there is no uh, uh, local clinics uh, in their area. And we have to uh, empower the local leader, uh, the uh, religious leader, the NGO, uh, local groups, and let them all come forward, fight, to fight this one together. Uh, uh, that is the only way. Every village, every uh, kampung uh, must come together and fight this uh, as a as a one coordinated force. Uh, understand that the nation is at war. Understand that the situation is war every day. People are dying. Uh, but I don't see this government see the urgency, uh, mm -hmm. or the community see the urgency because that uh, there is no nas effective national campaign uh, to to evoke the kind of. Uh, spirit uh, for people to come forward uh, to fight this together. Yeah, what a, a, sorry, we're running out of time. Just very, one quick question. Could you describe the economic uh, challenges for your constituents and the support they, uh, they're getting or not getting? No, we're, we're talking about majority of rural area. Uh, now uh, uh, we're talking about uh, M4D, B4D. I think at this moment, the way I look at it, there's no more M40. Uh, it's all B40 out there. 80% uh, of them probably facing serious economic challenge. Okay. Everyone is worried uh, uh, how to make the ends meet. Everybody's worried uh, the uh, food on the table. Uh, uh, 
So people are suffer uh, economically uh, with the a year, uh, more than a year of uh, pandemic. Uh, uh, so there's a lot of hardship out there uh, for people to, uh, for us to convince them uh, to look at this, uh, to to come out, uh, to take a day off, and uh, uh, to come out us uh, uh, with their own expenses, travel. Uh, there's no uh, many places have no good bus services, no right. bus services. In fact, you know, uh, to come to come out, you know, particularly for senior citizens, the sick, you know, um, the disadvantaged group, you know, uh, yeah. deep into the village, uh, very difficult uh, for them to uh, to uh, get themselves uh, vaccinated. Okay, Wong Tak, thank you so much for joining us on the show. That was Wong Tak, MP of Bentong, wrapping up our episode tonight. So that's all we have for you on this episode of Consider This. But thank you so much for watching the show. I'm Melissa Idris. And I'm Sherrod Kutin, signing off for the evening. We will be back with you same time tomorrow. Till then, good night.